Hello, my friends. I'm about to do another wine pour, but first let me show you the dried result of the one I did the other day. Um, not yet varnished, but it's got that ruby red is metallic, and I think it'll, and the silver, of course, is metallic, so I think it'll look really smashing when it's um, varnished. Quite pleased with it. Most people want me to leave it alone rather than embellish, and because I'm doing a series of them, um, I'll probably leave some unembellished and paint a wine glass on one or two, and we'll see which are more popular. So that'll be fun. Today, I'm pouring Chardonnay. <laughs> now, the range of color of Chardonnay, I understand, is from a pale yellow. So I mixed up lemon yellow with a lot of white, or white with a touch of lemon yellow is more like it. I have a lovely gold here. These are all Arteza colors. Um, this one is called, uh, oh, here it is, um, Golden Hour, Pearl Golden Hour. It's just a beautiful pale gold. And then I have to have some contrast because I'm going to have a white background. It's just so light. I've mixed up some per, um, pearl copper gold. And yeah, I think that'll be nice. Some some The range of colors in Chardonnay's goes from a, a pale yellow to a honey color almost. So I think this could work. Now, standing by, I have... A little deeper yellow in case I need it and some uh, burnt umber with some of that copper in there. Um, it sells up really nicely but um, I just don't want it taking over so I'm unless I need it I'm just going with these three. Whoops. So let's get to it. This is an 8 by 24 inch canvas, and um, I'm not sure which orientation I like. I, I like both the horizontal and the vertical, so we'll decide when we go hang them what, it, what looks best. You can see this was a used canvas. I hosed it off, and there was a little bit of little remnants of a previous pour on there, but not too much, so I think it's still okay to use. Okay, and yeah, might as well. This is a deep canvas as well, one and a half inches, so I need to get good coverage on the sides. All right, let's move that around. Sometimes I get so sick of pouring the mess, and then sometimes I just can hardly wait to do it. And right now, I'm um, really enjoying myself. Well, I have so much on my plate right now, I really shouldn't be taking time to do this, because I've got to get ready for the show. But part of that is that I'm picking up the paintings that are at the winery and replacing them. So um, that's what these are for, replacement pieces. So I'm feeling pressured kind of to do it. Pour this week, varnish next week, hang the following week. Or varnish and hang, that's what. Anyway, you don't need to know all that. So I'm going to lay it out the same way. Of course, it's not going to look just the same, but um, I'm going to start with the copper. I think that may be it for the copper. I think the rest of it will just be these two colors. And 
this gold. I'm going to go heavy on this because it's so very pretty. Okay. Now that I've done it, I wish I had gone a little skinnier in the middle. Kind of meant to do that, but uh, oh well. Okay, let's see what happens. Here we go. This looks skimpy up here. I've got to add some more. <laughs> False alarm. Did I just add the wrong one? Yes, I did. I added the brighter yellow instead of the pale. Oh, oh well. Maybe that'll work out to be good. I can't remember which side I said was skimpy. My brain. Okay, here we go. Oh, I think I like it. I think I like it. Uh, yeah. Oh, gosh. It's selling up nicely here. It's just very um, uh, delicate and subtle in there and right in here. A little bit there. Oh, oh it's pretty. I like it. Gosh, and I'll tell you folks, something about naming your pieces. Um, and a lot of people say, I, I don't name them. I you know, let the customer name them. Well, I, I don't think it's that important to have a name. I name mine because, um, well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's easy for me to differentiate between, you know, it's not the, the purple and blue one as opposed to, you know, a name to it. Um, Lilac dreams. I don't know. I'm just making that up. Um, so I can tell my paintings apart easier. Plus, I do find that customers will connect to pieces that are named where they might overlook other ones. Case in point, the uh, paintings I have out at the winery now, I have about eight pieces and one of them is that beautiful blue iris one I did. And I think it's the prettiest of the bunch that's hanging up out there. Oh, there's a cat here. But um, the one that sold was named Wine Cooler. And that, I felt, was the least attractive of the bunch. So at a winery, of course, you know, the, the wine name spoke to the buyer. So I really think it's helpful to name your pieces. And I, I, I like to name them real short, one or two words. That's just what I generally strive for. And there you have it. Oh, it's selling up nicely. Okay, let me... I'm happy with this. Could go in a brewery, though. It looks like... Cause it, wasn't, it looks like it could be beer, too. But anyway, I'm pleased. Let me bring you in. So a little bit of that cell action there and there. I don't know that you can appreciate the the gold, the metallic, but it is quite. I'm sorry about that shadow. How can I avoid that? I don't know. There's that subtle selling up over there, but that that is all a gold shimmer. 
gold overlay there that's uh, going to dry really nicely, I think. There you have it. Of course, there's one little part I'm not crazy about, but I, I'm not going to mess with it because overall, I'm quite pleased. Okay. Well, that's number two of the series. Next, I'll be doing... Um, I'm not sure what kind of wine, but um, I'm pleased with this one. I hope you like it too. Okay, my friends. Thanks for watching. Bye.